Hello, welcome to the Style Center. I'm Devin Dion, and today I have local stylist Chris Whitfield with me. Hi. <laughs> what sparked your interest in fashion? Well, I learned early on that I loved fashion when I would look for certain things and I couldn't find it, so I would recreate looks or design certain things with friends and they would kind of make clothes for me and I usually used to do it with like my mom family members and it just kind of grew rapidly from there so about what age would you say I would say around the age of uh, about 18 or 19 or so like so that. you started later in the game but you're still yes. Yes. taking care of business right, right. Did you attend any school or is just by hobby? You're just a natural trendsetter? Well, thank you for calling me that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, no schooling in fashion. Um, I did study under some other fashionable creatives, but I mean, I have my bachelor's degree it's in business, so um, that's pretty much the schooling I got. In so that. it just runs in your blood? I guess it's just a natural gift from God. All right, I like that answer. Um, who are some of the people that influence you in the fashion scene? I like some of the newer stylists. Um, Jason Bowden is very, he's very good. Um, Harrison, he's actually from Memphis, Harrison Crite. Um, I like Brian Javar, I love his work. And some others, but those are some of the most that I kind of look at a lot of times on social media every day. All right, so social media plays a part. Oh, absolutely, because people dress differently in different parts of the world. So in order to stay fashion forward, Memphis may not get that creative side of fashion. So I'm always looking at what L.A. is doing or what they're doing in Italy or New York is just to kind of bring a different side of fashion here. So while you're styling, you take those trends in other cities and bring them to Memphis? I wouldn't say I necessarily take those trends, but they are very inspirational. You know, I'm inspired by them, and I just put a little bit of my own creativity to it. Um, sometimes it just kind of comes natural. It's free-flowing. You know, it's not all of what I see out there. It could be something that I've had a creative vision on and just kind of went with it. I'm glad you mentioned social media. It's a lot of people on social media <laughs> that just throw out titles. They're everything. They're an entrepreneur. They're a stylist. But what makes you different from those on social media? Consistency. I think um, when you're walking in something that you really love, you don't do it for the hype or the fame or popularity. You know, you do it regardless. So after the hype is over, if they're not booking or calling you, you're still doing it, and it's in this the fire is still there. And so you, I mean, you are what you call yourself for what you answer to, to say the least. But, I mean, I definitely think that if you consistently do it, you can become whatever you set yourself out to be. So. Okay. So do you just style for, like, photo shoots? Or do you, like, do more personal styling, wardrobe consulting? I do it all, actually. I do photo shoots, branding. Um, I do personal styling, personal shopping. I also do closet revamp. So anything that's regarding fashion, I'm the guy. I don't mind taking, you know, tackling that job. If you could sum it up in one word, what would be the title you would give yourself? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> in one word, I would have to say that. Well, what I enjoy the most about fashion um, is being able to bring out the inner beauty in someone it's more than just clothes so i a lot of people kind of call me like the fashion genius here because i i'm able to kind of turn around your perspective of fashion and what you see it and revamp that and make you look you know beautiful and so you feel beautiful so i i, I it's hard to say that that one thing to describe me but that's my motto that's kind of what i live by when i'm dealing with my clients I'm always about bringing out the inner confidence I like that. Yes, ma'am. You have it here on the Style Center with Chris Whitfield, the fashion genius.
Devin Dion with the Style Center. I'm sitting here lonely with this empty chair, but you could be there. If you're promoting a local business, anything fashion-wise, you have a new clothing line coming out, you're a stylist, you need clients, come here so I can help you promote and get it out there to the world. Check out L3Television.com for more details. We're back. I noticed that you said earlier that you have your own clothing line. What is the name of that? Okay, it is named, oh God, it is called Brand Your Life. Mm -hmm. And it is a collection of positive messages that I've used throughout my, how can I put it, um, throughout my lifespan of situations um, to kind of impact our generation. When I first noticed that I wanted to do it, um, was my mom had an event and I designed some t-shirts that said survivor and people wanted to buy them. And so I was like, Oh, I should just like get some more made and sell them, you know, just doing it. But years went by and I didn't. And somebody brought it back to my attention. They was like, you remember that survivor t-shirt? Like some of the stuff that's going on, like I could wear that. I could use it. And I was like, Oh, that's dope. You know, like I could just like get some made and, you know, get them for them. But I didn't think to make it a business or a brand. And so when I was dealing with other issues or situations in my life, I started to change my image and, you know, other things started coming to me. So that's where This Is Not A Game came from. And I was like, you know what, I want to design some different ways and styles to make it fashionable. And that's how Brand Your Life came, because every message is a brand on your life. And so it's just a positive message. It's taking any message and applying it to your everyday life. So do you, would you say you have custom pieces or is it more like someone gives you an idea of what they like and you just it's a part of your apparel line? No, it's completely custom or designed by me. So what I do is I have a design team, of course, that brings it to life. But as as the vision comes to me, you know, I lay it out and make it plain and they design it and then I push it forward from there. So it, it it's not that. Others, I'm not inspired by others or what they're giving me, but it's the messages come from me. What I, um, how I'm impacting, how it can relate to others like that. And how long would you say Brand Your Life has been in full effect? Brand Your Life has been together now about three years. Three years. Yes. And it all started from you just helping someone? No, Brand Your Life actually was all started birth by me it was a creative idea it was back before t-shirts was really popular to make or things like that um it was just something that i wanted to make an impact with in the city and that's just kind of how it you know spiral from and any other items that you customize besides t-shirts um tank tops hoodies crew neck sweatshirts and that's about it that's and about it. are you looking forward to expanding? As as my platform grow, I do. I definitely want to expand. So as you know, the creative um, messages come, then I just I launch them out. All right, and one last question for those who are looking into branching off with their own business, because. Me personally, I want to do the same thing, but I just need a little guidance. What would be your advice to those starting out? My advice is to definitely do your research. I mean, I stayed up plenty of nights nice Googling, you know, some of my same ideas just to make sure that, you know, what I'm doing in relation to what others are doing, how could I be different? How could I stand apart from that? And so, and, and how can I be relevant, but stand, you know, you know, go against that. I, I don't think it's a competition at all, you know, because what's in you, you know, what's from the heart is definitely going to reach the heart. But I definitely think that once you, when you're doing your research uh, with what others are doing, you see kind of how to do it and don't be afraid to take a risk, take that leap and put it out there, you know, and take that constructive criticism. My first show that I was a part of um, I put the shirts in the show just 13 shirts to create a buzz you know that was the the business degree coming in kicking <laughs> in you know um, I just kind of 
put it out there to see how it would take and people loved it but um a problem with it was it was still kind of confusing the message so i had to go back and sit down with a group of friends who are i feel that are stylish and say hey would you wear this or if you first saw this what do you think you know and they gave their constructive criticism and i was able to go back and tweak it before i did an initial launch that way i wouldn't have any mess ups so do a lot of you know leg work with prepping and samples so you can see where you stand and because everything won't everybody won't take everything and if don't be afraid to you know get the negatives if it's ugly it's ugly you know ask them <laughs> <laughs> how can i make it cute <laughs> you know maybe it could be the color you know you just never know so so i noticed you said with friends did you offer like hold up your samples to strangers like complete strangers or i haven't all... did that yet i haven't did that yet but when i sat down with those creative people and we went over color concepts and stuff we kind of knew then what it would look like once I put it on a shirt as a sample and models wore it. You know, those were kind of like my strangers, the models. And I told them, you know what, y'all keep them and y'all take them back to your colleges and your schools and y'all wear them and see if people would like them and if they would inquire. And they did. You know, a lot of people was like, we like this shirt. You know, when, where is it? How can I get one? And so they let me, you know, they confirmed to me that okay, I'm in I'm in the right direction. Let's just make some different colors and see what this look like. You just kind of play it from to there to get the buzz out. Right. All right. Stay tuned to figure out more behind the stylist. L3 Media is the Mid South premier videography and photography company. We specialize in capturing all of life's greatest moments. Whenever you need talented and professional service for your special events or business, L3 Media is the company for you. You can contact us at all of our social media sites. You can like us on Facebook. Check out our website. Follow us on Twitter. Or always feel free to email us. We are L3 Media, your number one source for all your videography and photography needs. Give us a call today. Hi, I'm Devin Dion. Be sure to check out the Style Center every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. on Comcast 31. Stay stylish. Welcome back. I'm still here with Chris Winfield, local stylist, and we're going to get into his thought process. So, what moment did you realize that you were really official, that you really doing your dream job? Well, actually, I styled a couple of people um throughout the year but i guess it's that moment when you get that first celebrity stylist that you put the clothes together you had the fitting or your creative idea that kind of makes you legit and so although i felt like i was already legit from all of the work i've done i guess that time that i styled michelle williams of destiny's child really kind of made me feel like i've accomplished one of my biggest uh, moments so that's i have to cool. say that is one of my biggest moments as well and that's not like the only name you can throw out because i thought you was really gonna say erica from mary Man. right I, I really thought you was gonna say that well <laughs> I, I had the opportunity to assist in styling her my first time dealing with a celebrity and so i, t I took that as a teachable moment and lesson which i assist on um many occasions here and there when i'm able to but Michelle Williams was kind of my own opportunity. I was actually called and sent out to do it on my own. So, you know, then after her, I was able to go back and do another moment with Erica Campbell. So she was here again and then I was called to do it. So Michelle Williams kind of came before that. And then Erica came again. So that was the aha moment. Well, that was an aha <laughs> moment for me. Yeah. You know, anywhere else it could have been other people that I've dealt with because I deal with a lot of officials in the local city so so is it like word of mouth how do you get your opportunities because i heard you say you assist with a lot so how do you get those opportunities well i wouldn't say that it's word of mouth but a lot of times when you're pushing your brand out there and you're doing things um that's kind of how I, that's what it boils down to i do a lot of promotional stuff so i do a lot of advertising on social media 
you know, Facebook, they use their Facebook to advertise my work. Um, whenever they're doing work with me, they make sure they let the world know that they were styled by me or they work with me. So it kind of go hand in hand. So to the young people out there that's looking forward to a bright future with styling, you would say social media is the key. Social media is great right now. You know, um, definitely network in areas where your gift is or say, for example, like fashion shows or, you know, you see other local designers that are coming up that are good. I always connect and network with them, find out ways you can help them and work with them so that you can use those opportunities to showcase your work. And so, you know, definitely don't just use Instagram or Facebook alone, but it is what they call popping right now. So, (laughs) you know, whatever is hyped, use those opportunities to, you know, push your or enhance your brand. Have you ever been at an event or just watching TV and you see a celeb or just a person that you're like, oh, my gosh, your outfit is all over the place. Let me assist you. (laughs) I wouldn't say that I always do that. Now, I always watch um, celebrities or I say public figures on TV and I I always question myself, like, what would I do different or what would I do to enhance their look or what would I see? What could I see them in? And I always prepare myself in their mind because I never know when I have those opportunities. And so when I do, it's in my back of my mind. I was like, you know what? I always wanted to see that that person in this. So I always wanted to bring this side of fashion out to them. So that's kind of the the thought process I have when I see those celebrities on, on TV now when they are looking not so great. I'm out then I'm just wondering what went wrong. More so than what I would have done. I'm like, okay, the designer messed this up or who was the stylist and what was they thinking? You know, and I actually get on social media and try to research them and see like, okay, I see what they was going for, but it didn't happen like that. Why did they let them walk out like that? You know, but we all have our moments of scare and when it's not good and you just have to roll with the punches. So what is one celebrity that you would like to tweak or like make over? Well, she's actually beautiful. She don't, this celebrity is, and I don't even look at her as a celebrity. I look at her as a legend. Um, but I've always, and she's not even far. Like I always said in my mind, if I ever had the opportunity to work with her, like, gosh, I would just love to just work with her in the simplest form. Nothing magical or beautiful. Cause she's always beautiful, but it's CC Winans. I absolutely love everything about CC Winans. Yes. And so, um, I don't think that's even a hard task to take on. Maybe I'm just like that one puts me in like a starstruck moment. So, you know, everybody else kind of is like, you know, oh, that would be dope. But she just makes me go like, ah, oh, you know, but she's definitely the one. So when you're styling a client, do you get to know them on a personal level or you just look at them and say, hey, this is the look I want you to go for? Oh, I definitely have those consultation consultations with them. I think what's most important is getting to understand where they are mentally with with what and how they were what they were a lot of times you know you're looking at them and you know you know how you can revamp their look but you've got to understand why they dress the way they do because if there is a self-esteem issue if there's a self-conscious issue that's going to show in what you put them in so although they may look good in something and if they're when they're not comfortable it's still not gonna you know come out right so it's imperative that i've Feel the, cl- feel the client out and understand, you know, what it is that you're trying to get out of this look and how can I enhance your inner beauty so you enhance your confidence, you know, so that you can look your best. When put in a position to style, do you style using like clothes you go shopping for or do you put the artist or your client in your clothes? Well, my brand is an apparel brand, so it's not always fitting. It's like T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, crop tops, tank tops, and all of that stuff. So a lot of my clients are professional clients. So it could be work. It could be, 
you know, special events, red carpets. It could be any of that. So that won't always be fitting. But um, we will do, I will pull from some of the local designers or some designers that are in other cities and states, you know, that have ready to make samples or ready made samples or clothing that's already, you know, or we'll do some custom stuff. Some of my clients want something specially, special made. And so I have a designer um, gift to me and I kind of design something and get with another designer, have them make it and we'll bring that vision to life. So. Is it like a set budget or is it just yes. go with the flow? I try to start with a budget. I, I like to let my client, you know, let me know what it is that, you know, they can afford, where they are in it, and we dress around that. All right. And to display your style, do you want to give out your social media? Do you have a website? Yes. Is there any plug we can let the people know? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, to reach anything regarding fashion and style in my brand, you can go to TopherDewayne.com. That's T O P H E R Dewayne D E W A Y N E. That's one word. TopherDewayne.com. Also, Brand Your Life is my um, apparel company, um, which is B Brand Your Life B R A N D Y A L Y F E dot com. Topher Dwayne on Instagram, Christopher Whitfield on Facebook, and Brand Your Life on Instagram. You have accomplished so many gigs and so many things in your career. How long would you give the time frame of your career? How long have you been styling? Styling, I'll say since the age of 18, I would say a little bit over 10 years, but professionally, I'm going on two years. All right. I like the way you put that. So yes. when you feel like you're doing professional gigs, two years. Right. I started two years ago um, taking styling seriously, um, walking in it as a brand. But before that, you know, just redressing, recreating things, giving instructional fashion instruction to groups and people and friends. That's considered styling. I didn't know it. I didn't know that's what was in me or what was going on. But when you once you're walking into something that's your passion, you think back. You'd be like, I've been really doing this a long time. Like, I was already telling people. And then people was bringing it to my attention. Like, you know, you remember you was telling me that this didn't look right and what to wear and what colors for fall and winter. So, yes, I would say that. If you want to stay stylish and stay in touch with the Style Center, catch us on Comcast 31 every Wednesday night at 10. Stay stylish.